In this section I'm going to introduce you to the HTML5 canvas for the first time. We're going to develop a very very simple sprite class to allow us to display some really simple images. And we're going to introduce sprite sheets for the first time. So we can select different rectangular sections as a sprite from a bigger image. Hey, let's get started. OK, we're ready to start using Canvas. I've got, I've created a folder called Section 2 and another folder inside that called Video 1, which is the position we're up to. In there I've got an image, just a simple um, image of a flower, um, and I've got the bare bones of um, an HTML file. Just uh, a doc type, HTML tag, head tag and body tag. So, so we'll give it a name just so we um, know which section we're in. Um, and we'll finally add a canvas with an ID of game. We'll use that later to access this. We'll give it a width of four, 460 uh, and a height of 320, measured in pixels. And so we can see it, we're going to give it um, a border which is one pixel solid and black. Okay, so if we, if we save that um, and then we run it, we've got, hey presto, a black rectangle. Not very impressive. Believe me, things are going to get better. Uh, with the canvas, because this rectangle here is the canvas we've just created here, 460 pixels wide, 320 pixels down. In Canvas, just like most of HTML, the coordinate system has X going up from the left. So X would be 0 here and 460 over here. And Y going down from the top. So Y would be 0 there and 320 down there. OK. Now we're going to add a new file that we're going to call game.js. So it's a JavaScript file. And in that we're going to use a class. So we're just going to call the class game. And it will have a constructor. All, all classes have a constructor. In this instance, I'm not passing in any parameters, so that that that's empty in the brackets and we're going to create some properties of this. First of all we're going to find the canvas and that's going to be the canvas we've created so get element by ID and the element ID was gain. So that creates that and just about everything we do with Canvas uses a context. So we'll pull, pull in the context by using get context. Um, and in this instance, we're getting the 2D context. OK, so we'll save that. And we'll go back to our index file. And we'll make sure it it loads this JavaScript file we've just created. And a very important part is we've got to make sure that we don't start playing about with that this JavaScript file at all until the entire DOM's loaded. So we'll add a, a event listener. Um, and watch out for DOM content loaded. And when this happens, we'll run a little function that 
creates a new game. Okay, we're using the ES6 const, so that's a constant. Uh, you have a variety of new, uh, instead of just being a var, which is a global level variable, in ES6 we have the variables that are at the scope of this function. So they're, they're in the scope of wherever they're declared. And in this instance, we're not allowed to change the game because it's a constant. If we wanted something that where we could change it, we'd use let. So let, var, let, and const are, are the options available to you. But in general, we'll be using let and const because we've not got any global variables that we're declaring. So let's hope that um, that all went well and that there's no complaints. Perfect. OK. So back to this. We now want to actually get hold of an image. So we'll declare a, an image, which we're going to call sprite image, because in general, it's going to be sprite images that we're, we're, we're loading. So let's start calling them that. And the sprite image source will come from flower.ping, which we've got just here. And we need to put a onload event for this. So here we have an onload event. We'll just declare a game constant so that we can use that in our onload event. So when the image is loaded, we want to be able to create a sprite. The sprite is going to take a variety of options as, a, as, a, as parameters, which we're going to pass in as a single object. It's going to need the context of the canvas. We're going to give it a width, which is going to be the width of the image. Bear in mind that oh, that should be game. At this level, inside the sprite image on load, this refers to the image. At this level here, this refers to the game. So we have to be careful. That's why we've declared a, a constant called game, so we can refer to game at this level, if, because if we use this, the this is then referring to the sprite image. And we'll finally say that the image is this, actually, just this. OK, then in the game, we'll create a new sprite, which takes this op options object as a ooh, as a parameter. And once it's created it, it renders it straight away. So that completes our game class. And we move on now to our sprite class, Whoops. Uh, which takes a constructor, like all classes do. But this time, it has parameters. Well, a single parameter, but that brings in multiple, multiple things, because it's, it's, it's an object. Um, we're just going to copy in the things that we've passed in via the options object. So the context is the context we got from the canvas, which we've passed in via this options object, and we've saved in the sprite as a 
property of the sprite itself. So that creates the sprite. Now we need to add this method render. So we don't put any functions or anything that, like that to prefix it. We just use the word itself, open close brackets, curly braces. Now we're going to use the context that we've been carefully passing around to actually draw the image we've just loaded. The um, draw image takes anything from three to nine um, parameters. The simplest option is three, in which case we just pass the image, an x value, and a y value. And that should, if all's gone according to plan, give us a flower in the middle of the screen. And there it is. Okay, so that was. Let's review what we did. We created an HTML file, and in the HTML file we added a canvas. We added a, a game.js file, which is going to be most of our functionality in that. We added a DOM content loader loaded event listener, so that we weren't st trying to play with this file until everything's loaded. We created a class which was game, which, uh, which in the constructor creates properties of the game. Firstly, it, it grabs hold of the canvas that was on the HTML page. Then it gets the context out of the canvas. Then it creates an image. It sets the source for the image. It sets a a constant called game which we can use within the onload event for the image. We then define some an object which is going to be parameters that we pass into a sprite. We create a sprite and then we render the sprite. The sprite is incredibly simple. It just takes the options object, saves it all as properties of the sprite and then in the render we use the image property to actually render the image. At this point, we're not using the width or the height. OK, I hope, you, hope all that went well. Uh, in the next section, we're going to move, we're going to use exactly the code we've created here to build on top of it. So if you've not been typing along, then I recommend downloading the, the resources that are available to, available to you up in the top left hand corner if you're in the usual usual um, course screen. Okay, thanks for that and um, see you in a minute. This video is from my Udemy course HTML5 Game Development Beginner to Pro. To get the full course at a great discount pull down the description.